Gilgamesh has blessed us with his presence. Oh. Oh my. You know, I've said this many times in my Fate Stay Night Unlimited Blayworks reviews. I'm a fan of Gil. Sometimes I hate being a fan of Gil because of some of the things he does, but I fucking love Gilgamesh. He's such a good character. Seeing my boy Gilgamesh just in Fate Khalid laughing and doing what we found out about the Holy Grail War to the fucking mountain. Oh, bro. Like, did you see what he did to the fucking mountain? Like, when I saw him come up out of the fucking tunnel, and he's riding, the, like, his ship, I was like, fate zero, fate fucking zero, fate zero, fate fucking zero, dude! And then he's just flying, he goes to the mountain, and the mountain just, it's gone. It's fucking gone. Like, the mountain just gets incinerated. It's gone. It's fucking gone. Oh, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, my boy Gilgamesh is not fucking around. Like, he straight up is strong. You get in his way, you're done. Like, you're fucking done. <laughs> and that's... That's kind of... This episode. I'm gonna say right now. I think... The build-up and the slow half, first half of this season was worth it. Definitely fucking worth it for these episodes. Oh my god. Like, this episode was so damn good. So good. Like, there, there was so much story revealed in this episode. Like, we come to find out that there is another Holy Grail War going on. Yeah! Like, what the fuck? Okay, so, the Grail War we know of from Fate Zero, or the Grail War we know in general... Now, remember, I, I'm just gonna throw this disclaimer out there real quick. I haven't played majority of the visual novels, like all the visual novel games and stuff, so I, I can't say what type of Holy Grail Wars are in different games. What I'm getting at from my lack of information I know from the Holy Grail War I know of, it, it's not nowhere near like the Holy Grail War currently going on with the cards. We get confirmation that what is going on with these cards right now is a Holy Grail War. Yeah, a Holy fucking Grail War is going on. It's different from the one that is in this world. For instance, the one that we are normally used to. So, the one that was stopped 10 years ago, and Fates are like after Fate Zero, and is no longer going on, and it saved the life of Kuro and Illy, and saved a lot of people, because of that, that Holy Grail War has stopped. But for some reason, there is another Grail War going on that is completely different from the one we know of. So, this raises many fucking questions right now. I have many questions, but... I'm gonna do some fairy crafting on this, okay? So, Miu. I, I noticed in this episode, I noticed it right off the bat. Like, I really just put my fucking Fate Unlimited Blade Works thinking cap on. Like, when I saw this episode, when I saw some of the, the dialogue and all that, I started putting my, you know, thinking cap on because it's getting to that point where I should, especially with the series. And so... I saw Miu. Miu was talking in this episode, and she was having some dialogue and stuff, and as the episode progressed in certain scenes, it seemed like Miu knew of some things that she honestly should not know. Now, majority of this season has hinted, and since the actual introduction of Miu, to be honest, there's been some mysteries and connections with her and Ilya. There, there's been this huge connection between these two characters, and so... With the way the direction of these past couple episodes have been more focused on the Holy Grail War, it makes me assume that Miu knows about these Holy Grail Wars. Like, she really knows about what's going on, because the way she was reacting to the mountain, the way she got there really quickly when she found out where Gilgamesh was going, there was a lot of flags going on in this episode that made me realize that Miu knows a lot that she is not letting on to. So, I'm going to just... This is a fairy crown. Now, take this with a grain of salt. I am most likely incorrect. I'm just, I'm thinking about this, okay? Now, I, like I said, I could be incorrect. Don't think this is true. I'm just throwing it out there, okay? The way Miu reacts in this episode, I hope it, I'm not just, you know, talking out my ass here. The way Miu acts, it feels like she might be from somewhere else, so to say. Like, 
another world or another timeline or maybe she's a counter guardian I wonder it makes me wonder is she a counter guardian or something because she knows about some events like the way she acted in this episode it's just yeah it, it's very suspicious so what the fuck what the fuck what's going on here with me is she like some form of counter force counter guardian like archer or something else entirely or am i wrong because there's some key flags in this episode i've realized and so i don't know i mean thinking about it if you think about it fate stay night like okay this is spoiler territory i'm just gonna say spoiler territory right now for fate zero or fate stay night unlimited blade works this is kind of spoilers for that thinking about it fate is kind of based upon different dimensions and timelines and worlds we found out about this from many other series you know different series like for instance you know Karno Kilkai to you know fate you know stay not in the limited blade works and then other different parts and paths of the visual novel and then other anime of fate we found out a lot about these different timelines and since Faint Stay Night was always kind of focused around something like this, like different worlds or different timelines or universes, and since Fate Khalid kind of could be, in a sense, an extension onto Fate Stay Night, for instance, a different route to Fate Stay Night, like Ilya's route, it makes me assume what if one of our characters are very similar to Archer? Because it's starting to make me think about that. Because... If the world is in danger, of course you would have it to where the counterforce would send in counter guardians to stop some shit. I, I'm, just, I'm just throwing it out there. So now I got that away. One thing I want to mention is Gilgamesh at the end. Gilgamesh has a human body, or well, I can't really say he's a human body. I guess he's still a heroic spirit. But he has a body. He doesn't have that shadowy, mud, disgusting looking creature body. He actually has a body now. But oddly enough, he has a kid body. So it's going to be weird seeing Gilgamesh as a kid instead of grown up like a badass like we saw in Fate Zero and, you know, Fate Stay Night. It's going to be very weird seeing Gilgamesh in that type of form because the voice actor is not entirely the same. But also, the. The introduction to this little boy Gilgamesh was pretty damn priceless. Ilya grabs the King of Heroes' junk, grabs his gym, so to say. And as we know, since Gilgamesh has the Vault of Babylon, like he has this big vault and all that and all sorts of shit, I guess Ilya just grabbed the most sacred treasure of them all. She grabbed his balls and dick. She, she grabbed his dick and balls and was holding them. And in a sense, I guess this is karma. Because you remember Gilgamesh did some heart surgery to Ilya. And so this is in a way Ilya getting back at Gilgamesh for the heart surgery by grabbing his dick and claiming his jewels for herself. Just saying. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just, it's very funny. So tell me your thoughts, comments below. You all have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.